Welcome to the Tonight Show with Mrs. Malam. That's me. I am so excited that you've decided to join us again this evening. If this is your first time coming to the show, welcome. And if you were here last week, then you already know that tonight we're going to be learning a little bit more about stop motion videos from an unexpected expert, as well as how to make paella. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Life during the stay-at-home order can be a little bit like a circus. Our unexpected expert from today took that to a totally different level with her interpretation of a circus. Duplo Lego Circus, a film, film by Jane Walker. Chicken. Breach. Chicken. Birch. Hello. Sit right there, little girl. Oop. Presenting the trapeze girl. We. Oh dear. Oh. Yay! Ta-da! Whoa! Ta-da! Weehaw! Hello! Ha ha ha! Wee! Hey, I can't get up! Ta-da! Bye-bye! Hey, move it! Bye-bye! Credits written and filmed by Jane, edited by Mary. Hi Jane, my students are gonna be watching this. Can you tell them a little bit about yourself? I'm in second grade and I like to um, read books and do screens. Okay, and um, you made a really excellent video um, using Lego blocks. What gave you the idea to make that video? I sort of just thought of it because like, I just thought of it and we had the Legos out a, out a lot at, at some point. Now, had you seen stop motion videos before? Yes, she, she actually did a camp. And it was like, you, you made this set and it was like, a cardboard, it was a cardboard, and you color all over it, and you, it, you'd have a person, you would, you would make, get to make little clay figures, and you'd, you'd have an iPad, and when you're ready, you take pictures of it, one by one. That's a lot of, that's a lot of pictures. But we took breaks. You did break. So how many pictures do you think it took to make your circus video? Maybe 50, maybe not. All right, so Jane, I think we set them to be a quarter of a second each is how they, they that's when they shifted. We tried it different ways. Do you do the voices afterwards? Yes. The movie maker it allows you to sort of at one you it, you can click the re record button. So. Yes, after and there's a narration button in Movie Maker. And you and you and the movie plays and you just speak and you speak what you want to have want whenever you want there to be, be noise. Did you you wrote your whole script? You did that. You made all the words and everything up too. I just sort of like went along without even making a. Um, I I imagined it like whenever I thought of something, I would just roll with it. Just roll with it. It was an ad lib. Yes. 
And also the part where, where the for la the lady the swing breaks. That I accident. That was the part when I accidentally took a picture of it when the swing broke, but I turned it into part of the movie. Uh, that was my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> I like how you make that little character come right out and and help her. I was hoping you might be able to teach my high school students, some of them are 10 grades older than you, um, about how you made your video. And you don't have to be embarrassed because you are an expert. You've already made a really great film. So I sort of like, you take the picture you take a camera and, and at the bottom it's supposed to say I frame movie and that means that like you can take all the stuff and you can put it into your computer and you can sort of take take the stuff the stuff you want and put it into movie maker and then you sort of make a movie you make the movie from then you basically sort of like you, sort of like you sort of um, you put it to the speed you want, and you um, narrate it. This sort of like if you don't want if you hold it, your the camera. It just like you it slightly your hands move right. every picture. But this, it, you don't have to touch it at all. It just keeps it on the ground in whatever position you put it in. It you just basically it basically stays in that position. Did you move the set around, or did you move the tripod around? Sort of the set, and sort of both. I moved the tripod sort of when I needed to. Yeah. Well, I think that's, that's just awesome. Do you want to make movies as your full-time job one day? <laughs> no? What do you want to be when you grow up? A teacher, maybe. A teacher, maybe. Do you want to teach young students or older students? Young students. Young students? Yeah. But not too young. But not too young? Jane, this was really helpful. I'm so excited because I really want my students to be able to do creative projects like this at home. And you are a really great example of how you can be creative with just stuff you have already mm -hmm. right you already had a camera and um a tripod and then you could just use your lego blocks but do you think it would work if someone doesn't have a little tripod like that if maybe they just sat it up on top of a box or something like that with yeah them? yeah yeah we just used the tripod because because we, we had, had a tripod yeah so you might as well use it if you've already got it we thought about using legos to hold it up until we could find the the tripod. Hold it up like a nickel <laughs> Well, maybe you should think about like some engineering in your future. You've got some, you can put things together and make all kinds of stuff. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. All right. Well, Jane, thank you so much for talking to me today about your video. Our next guest this evening is Clark Sweeney. Clark is going to be coming to us from New Jersey and teaching us a little bit about how to make one of his favorite dishes, paella. Yeah, so today I'm going to be making a paella, which is a Spanish rice dish. Uh, it's very popular all across Spain, and it's a uh, short grain rice. We actually use Calasparo rice, which is from Calasparo, Spain. It's a smaller grain rice that fluffs up and it's really good and absorbs a lot of flavor. Typically, it'll take about an hour, hour and a half. The lower uh, heat level, um, it doesn't burn it and just kind of marinates uh, a lot longer and you get like a really good flavor. So I work on a food truck and a catering company. Um, and if we're doing this uh, at your house, we'll actually take about two hours, three hours 
uh, before you're ready to eat, just because we want to get all that flavor uh, nice and ready for you. Go for it. Let's see what you got. All right. So first, I'm just going to take out, I made some sausage. Now, we do use chorizo, and then I have some chicken thighs as well. So I'm going to cut those up, and that's what's going to be the main uh, protein, we'll say. Um, but really, to start is we're going to heat up the pan, some oil in it. We're going to do um, onions and peppers, start up the uh, sofrito. So it's a really nice thing to like make. It's not overly complicated. You just kind of throw the ingredients together, which is kind of like my favorite way to cook. It's kind of like how we kind of grew up cooking is until it looks good. So it's it's one of those deal, uh, one of those dishes where you can just kind of like, okay, you kind of like get the eyeball it. Um, that's why I'm excited to make it today because I get to make it the way I like it. So right now it looks like the pan is hot enough. I got some uh, onions chopped up. It's a yellow onion. Get those cooking in there. And you want to let those cook basically until they become translucent. So you're almost kind of sauteing them. Um, let it take a little bit. And then once those are good, and we'll add some peppers. And we'll get those nice and cooked down. Then we'll start adding seasonings and uh, go from there. So I'm going to chop up some chorizo sausage and get ready. Um, if you can answer a question that I know my students are absolutely going to have. Um, yeah. As my cousin, you clearly have known me for a long time. So what kind of story, remember, high school appropriate here, uh, <laughs> do you think that my students should know about me? Our grandmother lived down in Ocean City, uh, New Jersey, just like beach trips, boardwalk trips, um, like with you and you know your brother and your sister. We'd always go to get uh, ice cream. Uh, Core Brothers ice cream, if you don't know, is the best ice cream ever. Um, no question. Chocolate peanut butter swirl is by far their best flavor. Yeah, it's it's the best flavor. Though I don't think everybody in the family agrees with that, but I know you and I do agree on that. So that's definitely... Yes. <laughs> some people think it's like the orange swirl, but it's not. It's not. Peanut butter chocolate is the best, hands down. I don't know why you would get anything else. So the onions are pretty much cooking down. They're more translucent. And now I'm gonna add the peppers, which I just chopped up a red pepper. That, what's cool about paella is it was basically made as like leftovers. So it kind of became into existence by, they would just make it out of whatever they had left uh, from whether it was like a giant uh, feast or anything like that, or just in general, it was like whatever they could find. So the coastal towns in Spain typically had a lot of seafood. Though as you got in towards the land, it was a lot more just like whatever they could find. So sometimes it was like rabbit or venison, you know, deer meat, or anything like that, or chicken, and, you know, anything that they uh, could get their hands on. So we make on the food truck. We do specialize in two uh, when we do the food truck: chicken chorizo sausage, and then a uh, seafood, which we usually do shrimp and mussels and clams and at this point i'm going to add some minced or chopped garlic and i really think there's no such thing as too much garlic is it uh in particular that makes paella different than say just cooking all these things and tossing them with rice yeah, so, I mean, that's a very solid question. Um, it's more with the, what's kind of become, like, the main factor to paella is not just necessarily the ingredients, but also the uh, seasonings. So, it's, you got to use, uh, paprika is heavy, and saffron, and that's actually a really cool uh, thing, which we got right here. Um, it's actually really expensive is saffron. So I got a little baggie I stole from my father-in-law. He has a whole container of it. And uh, like a container like that big is like 70 bucks. Um, and then paella pans are actually really thin. Um, so you're not just putting in like a regular bowl or pan or anything like that. Uh, because it's not like a jambalaya. It's not like uh, other rice dishes where you want more liquid. Um, you actually want to cook off all of the liquid. 
And preferably, if you do it the way I like it, you actually get a little char on the bottom. It gives a nice little toasty flavor. And it's really, uh, really good. Yeah, the first time I ever had paella, I was traveling in Barcelona. The thing I liked the most about it at the time was the texture of the rice really changed from being sort of soft and creamy on the yeah. top or in the center to being real crispy around the bottom edges. And that was just, for me, the most delicious part. Uh, I did just add some seasoning. So I added two types of paprika. I just got a regular brand paprika that we have here. And then my little baggie of paprika I have, it's like a hot uh, paprika. So I add a little bit of heat and then parsley, salt, and pepper. So again, sometimes it's not a lot of ingredients that you're adding, but whether you add uh, at the right time, so you let it all marinate together, it's just gonna add a big, huge flavor. But, but um, basically you just kind of mix it all together. Make sure that all your, um, like your onions and peppers, everything gets all uh, of the seasonings. Mix it all, mix it all together. Um, at this point, it's, you wish it was smell gram because it starts smelling really, really good. Onions, peppers, and garlic, and you mix that all together, it smells like really, really good. Um, and then you add like a paprika, it gives it like a smoky flavor and a smoky smell. And uh, this is this is like the best part. Sometimes I just would cook this up and I would love to just put this like on a sandwich or something like with peppers, like bigger peppers and like, oh, so good. Um, moving on, I'm actually going to add in some chicken now and chorizo. Were those pre-cooked? Yes, yeah, so I just got chorizo links at the store and some chicken thighs and just cook them up real quick. 400 degrees, 375, whatever you're liking. Um, they don't need to be 100% fully cooked. I mean, if you want to, you can. If not, they're just gonna cook right now. Um, get that all mixed in together. Let that cook for about a minute or so. And then you add the broth and then rice. Or rice and then broth. You can do it either way. I like to do the rice first, actually, because you can have to mix it all in and make sure that it actually gets leveled out and all the flavor. And you put in the broth, and that's it. You want a three to one ratio. So you actually don't need to have uh, that much rice. So since it's just a small pan, I'm actually going to use like a cup of rice. So that means we're going to need three cups of broth. This is a half cup. I don't know if you can see, it's a, like I said, more short grain rice. I add that in right now. That way I like to make sure that it all gets kind of mixed in. And you also want to make sure nothing gets stuck on the side of the pan. Uh, this is about as much measuring as I'm doing the entire time. This is a half a cup, so I gotta do a couple times. As you can kind of see, hopefully, a lot of the rice kind of sticks up top. It gets caught on chicken. I don't know if you can see that, how quick, how easily you can see it, but you want to make sure that the rice gets pushed down and into the broth. Again, if not, it's not going to cook. Make sure they're all in the little bath or hot tub and whatever. Now I'm going to sprinkle in the saffron. Does a little bit of that spice go a long way? Uh, yes, though you typically want to have a healthy amount in your pan to really give it a um, golden color. It's pretty much, that's paella, you let that cook down. So we're gonna crack up the heat a little bit because we do want this to boil. And we're just gonna watch that do its thing uh, once the broth cooks down and you start seeing the rice, it'll start popping up. And then you just make it to your liking at this point where some people like the char on the bottom, some people don't. Um, traditionally in Spain, you get the char. That's called socrat. Uh, that is delicious. When you add the rice and the broth, um, you want to make sure that you get all your rice kind of tucked in. Uh, make sure it's not sticking uh, to any of 
uh, the ingredients that you have in there, since I'm doing chicken and chorizo sausage. Sometimes they cling to the tops of the chicken and they poke their heads out. And you, like I said, you kind of want them all in the, uh, in the party here. So here's the finished uh, product of our paella. It has now been all cooked down. The fun part about uh, paella, like I said, it's pretty easy to make in terms of, uh, it's not a, like overly complicated. You don't have to turn things on, turn it off, wait for this to do that, the whatever. You just kind of throw everything into the pan. Um, you don't even actually have to mix this. In fact, you're not supposed to. So you haven't always made paella or sold cars or any no. of the other things you've done. So what advice do you have for these students? My advice is traveling is great or do something uh, to serve others. So I actually, uh, after my first year in college, I took a break in college and wound up working in California uh, for a nonprofit. And I traveled the country for three months and I lived in a van and I went to high schools and colleges and shared documentaries and stuff like that. And, well, I'm not saying that you have to live in a van or anything like that, but just doing something a little bit that pushes your comfort zone, um, but plays to your strengths. Um, and sometimes you don't know what those strengths are yet. And that's okay. It's the bottom line that I would say is just try to do something fun and try to help others at the same time. So that way you're not, you know, you don't want to be selfish. It's always good to help others, whether you're cooking or you want to learn about something that's going on or you care deeply about helping the community. Just do something that would, uh, you know, make the earth a better place. And uh, you don't necessarily have to know exactly what you want to do because 12 years ago, I had no idea I'd be making paella and selling cars. You're going to make some weird choices. You're going to mess up a little bit. You're going to think that, no, nope, that wasn't so smart. You know, I didn't, I, I'm, I don't love this job. That's fine. You're okay with that. So just explore it and you'll find it. And that's the advice I have. It's okay to not know exactly the answer because you asked me 12 years ago, what do you want to be when you grow up? I was, I have no idea. And that was literally my answer. I, I don't know. I wanted to be an astronaut when I was in eighth grade. And then I wanted to be a history teacher when I was in ninth grade. And then I think I wanted to be, I don't know. I probably wanted to be in the rodeo, like a circus clown. I don't know. Like, I'm not that anymore. And who knows when we're going to be selling cars in four years from now. Maybe, because it's a decent job, but just have fun. Yeah, I'll stick by the answer. Have fun. Thanks for joining us tonight on The Tonight Show. A special shout out and thank you to Jane Walker and Clark Sweeney for agreeing to participate, teaching us about stop motion videos, and teaching us about how to make paella. A delicious treat. If you are interested in showing your stop motion creation as part of the next or an upcoming episode of The Tonight Show, I encourage you to submit it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Um, and I will hopefully see you again soon. Good night.